Playing handicaps in sports betting, specifically using the Asian handicaps skillfully, is a skill that only a few can practice professionally in betting. It seems daunting to judge to the correct line for given betting odds on the particular event, but like most things in life, it's a skill that can, can be mastered if you are willing to put in the effort. There is a book called Super Forecasting, The Art and Science of Prediction. This book is not directly about sports betting, but it is about becoming an expert in predicting events, which in turn is very much related to judging handicaps on the markets. In a nutshell, the authors have a run large scale study called the Good Judgment Project GJP, which involves thousands of random people predicting global events. The book explains which types of predictions are successful and which are not, as well as what techniques and personality characteristics the best bettors possess. In this video, I'll tell you some of the biggest takeaways that can be drawn from this book as well as few additional tips and good stuff that could help you quite a bit in your betting. First let's clarify what a handicapper is. It comes from the word handicap and its literal translation into English means advantage. A handicapper can be defined as a professional better as the majority of pros and syndicates bet on Asian handicaps as there is often the lowest margin, the most room for error on the odds and therefore an advantage for betters. The Asian handicap refers to which of the two teams you win and by what difference which is why it is important to consider what is the appropriate line for the particular odds. From there, it is the term of research, mathematics, statistics, information, etc. First, try to prove yourself wrong. One of the most horrifying things a punter can do is get too attracted to their beliefs about a particular team, player or sport. In such situations, it is important to act like a scientist and work to prove your hypothesis wrong, that is test yourself. Scientists need to be able to answer what would convince me that I'm wrong. If they can't give some answer to that question, they become too attached to their beliefs. There is always a way and a certain chance that a team or a player will win a sporting event. If there wasn't, the odds for one side would be one, in other words, 100% chance of winning. Now back to the study I mentioned earlier. In it, the small successful bettors are consistently looking for outside opinions to synthesize into their own. If you think Arsenal should be favorites to beat Tottenham with odds of 1.80 but it's currently at 2.10 relatively close to kickoff and the, the markets were open a long time ago then you are either missing something in your analysis or you are overweighting some feature of the match. In these scenarios the best a better can do is work hard to prove he is wrong and figure out why he is so far off the current odds. Also more useful to pay attention to the opinions of those who disagree with you than those who agree. Yes, it can sometimes be difficult to have a productive conversation with some who has an opposing opinion on a match, but listening to their opinion and synthesizing it into your own opinion is a must for betters. Don't rush to judgment, be analytical, reasoned and white-eyed. The next thing is take notes. Many handicappers write notes about a match that could help substantiate a potential future bet. Think of it as a notebook where you write down the most important things from your lesson at school. Perfecting your note taking or argument writing is another way to improve your judgment. What I'm about to tell you now will sound funny but it is true. The average player in the book study was about as accurate as a chimpanzee throwing arrows for darts. In other words, the average person making a prediction might as well have just guessed instead of putting in hours of work. Interestingly, there is a relationship between the wording used in people's predictions and their results. Forecasters who used terms like moreover or in addition in their reasoning performed worse than those who gave random prediction. Why? Because these terms are only used by people who are trying to prove why they are right and why others are wrong. Furthermore, predictors who used these terms also performed worst on the topics they specialize in, once again showing that they are too attached to their beliefs and fail to keep an open mind. On the other hand, the group of predictors who performed best used wording such as although and however, despite, throughout their reasoning for their forecast. These formulations allowed them to counter their claims, maintain their views in the realm of probability and remove any kind of attachment in a particular idea. As a handicap when presented with a new game or match to analyze, try to be as open-minded and pragmatic as possible. Try to insert language into your reasoning that makes you see the other side. Teamwork. 
In betting, you often hear about the wisdom of crowds and the importance of winning over the closing line to have long-term success, except that the wisdom of crowds is very close to its fallacy, and it's not always easy to judge that. The best thing about beating the closing line at a sharp bookmaker is that it incorporates all the information from the best sports bettors in the world, so you know you're doing something right 100% of the time. Some handicappers can do this on their own, but imagine the power of multiple pro bettors coming together together to form the correct odds. That's what syndicates do, a topic we've touched on many times, pulling the opinions of multiple pro bettors will certainly improve your betting results and the authors of the book even explain by how much it will improve your results in their study. After one year, the results show that teams of predictors outperform individuals by an average of 23%. Moreover, these teams were randomly selected without any idea of, of the skill of level of each individual on the team. For the second year, the authors decided to change things up and group teams into something called super betters. In other words, to group the most successful individual players together to see if they could improve their personal scores and they do and over the next two years they end up exactly 50% better than their individual results achieved before. This shows the importance of teamwork in betting. Try working together with someone who successfully makes picks in the same sports or league as you. Care ideas and opinions from each other. This is likely to improve your judgment of lines and especially your profitability. It is possible for example that you are currently achieving a 5% return on investment in your support. However, imagine achieving 7.5% simply by increasing with interacting with other successful bettors. It's important to know that effective communication in a team environment is a key and when you think about it, this doesn't just apply to betting, but it in almost all areas of work and life in general. Work to understand the other side's arguments, ask accurate questions so you don't misunderstand someone and practice constructive confrontation, don't agree by default. Another good advice is to watch the market and the movement of the odds. Something that is very good practice to do is to watch the market and the movement of the odds and handicap lines. Usually watch the main line which is between 1.70 and 2 odds and change all the other lines according to it. Handicappers specialize in predict the rise or fall of odds. I'll give a different example of people who profit from betting on a different model. This is about trading on the betting exchange. Here you are not actually betting but trading odds. What do I mean? By predicting the direction of the odds correctly, traders can trade with guaranteed profit on the exchanges. This can also be done at bookmakers but exchanges are the more appropriate platforms for such activities. Absolutely the same is done by traders on stock and bond exchanges. On betting exchanges it is with odds on sporting events but as we know odds are translated into percentages and percentages are certain probabilities. Trading on the movement of the odds as opposed to predicting the outcome using statistics is called cold trading. Cold traders usually do not analyze the specifics of the sporting event itself but focus solely on market trends. Many profitable cold traders place particular emphasis on value in the odds projected in increase decrease in odds and thus value the rate of change of the odds liquidity of the market however how can such a practice help you if you are not a trader changing the odds follows some logic often in it is new information related to the event and upon learning it different bets follow resulting in a change in the odds the idea here is even without betting to try to find out at least some extent what the reason is the more liquid the market that is the smaller the sporting event the more limited the information about it. This is why we have commented in previous videos that it is better to specialize in smaller leagues and tournaments where far fewer people have information and if you have gotten to a level where you are getting real information then you can move easily and find the reason for the changing of the odds. Whether you aspire to become a sports trader or a fixed odds better there is one simple rule that every sports better should know if by the time the event starts the odds have dropped significantly from what you bet on then what you have found is value consistent execution of this requirement is profitable in the long run last but not least is patience and discipline patience in betting allows you to view the sport with a more strategic assessment of what is happening in the ring on the field or anywhere else patience can be viewed in a variety of ways for example the most successful betters 
investors, namely syndicates, are absolutely obliged to be patient. They have literally no right not to be because there are specific times when they have to bet. These moments come and go, but patience here consists in waiting for the right period to strike. To this can be added that if you specialize on a leak and a new round is coming up, but you don't find good betting opportunities, better skip that round and wait for once in the future. This is also a form of patience which applying intends more towards to the pro better than the amateur. Sometimes there are very successful or unsuccessful betting periods. These are also the periods when, like it or not, you are filled with the most emotion and it is much easier to lose sight of reality to some degree. Patience in such cases may consist simply waiting for the emotions to pass so that you can get on with your business. Patience is also not drawing general conclusions after insufficient information about an event of your performance in a particular period and this is one of the most common mistakes. In conclusion, becoming a good better is a skill that always needs building. Hopefully, the points in, uh, listed above will help you to improve your skills and clear some of your views on betting or help you improve your game. After watching this video and even if you read the book I've told you about, you won't become a super pro at betting. However, practice and consistency will surely be extremely helpful in doing so. These skills need to be practiced purposely in order to improve and gain experience to the point where you will learn to judge by for yourself very quickly which bet is worthwhile and which is not. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and let us know in the comments what your betting practices are.